Today, we're going to make local volumetric fog shaders in Unreal and Unity. Let's go! Most of the shaders we created so far on the channel have been for the surface of models. Today, we're going to look at something a little different. We're going to make volumetric shaders, which means that we're defining the characteristics of a 3D space instead of a 2D surface. Normally, we think of fog as something that's seen off in the distance, but sometimes you want to put some fog in one specific place, like in a basement filled with mist or in a spooky graveyard. Local volumetric fog is perfect for that. Both Unreal and Unity give us the ability to create local volumetric fog and allow us to create a shader that defines what the interior of that volume looks like and how it behaves. So today we're going to take a look at some of the things that we can do with that. First, we'll look at Unity, and then we'll switch over to Unreal. Unity's high definition render pipeline supports local volumetric fog. It comes with a set of samples that you can download from the package manager. So we'll just go up here to window and pick package manager. Then we'll select high definition RP, come over here to samples, and then scroll down to volumetric samples. And here we can hit import to bring in the samples package. So they've made a really nice demo scene here that makes it easy to switch between various examples. I can just select the volumetric, saw, volumetric samples collection here, and then I can switch the samples here with a drop down. So here's a 3D uh, volume texture that they're using as a mask. Here is a ground smoke example, and this is the one that we're going to be uh, building ourselves today. So I'm going to walk you through exactly how this one works. Here is a cloudy sample, so you can create your own uh, 3D volumetric clouds. Uh, here's a nice uh, example of something that you might use uh, as a visual effect. It's this kind of smoky volumetric orb. Uh, here's some procedural noise in the volume. And here's the one we were looking at before, some uh, kind of noxious fumes. It's really interesting that you can uh, create these effects that are three-dimensional uh, instead of uh, the normal two-dimensional on a surface, like I said. Uh, here's a nice uh, volumetric heart shape. And then finally, here's an example that shows off uh, the various different blending modes. Okay, well, let's go ahead and switch over to our sample scene and create uh, some volumetric fog of our own. Okay, here we are in our sample scene, and you can see I've got our local volumetric fog here that's doing this ground fog effect that we saw just a minute ago. And this is the one that we're going to build from scratch. But first, let's back up and cover some basics. Uh, first, we need to right click here in our hierarchy panel in order to create a brand new uh, local volumetric fog volume. I can pick rendering HDR or local volumetric fog and it's going to add a new volume for us. You can see that there's some fog in there but it's really subtle. Uh, so let's take a look at our settings and see if we can fix this. Here we can co come over here and see the uh, single scattering albedo which color uh, covers the color of the fog. And if I make it red it's it's a little bit more obvious what's going on there. Fog distance. This is kind of what is controlling the opacity. And you can see it. It's um, the tooltip there says density at the base of the fog determines how far you can see through the fog in meters. So right now we can see through the fog 10 meters. So we'd have to have uh, 10 meters worth of the fog for it to be opaque. But if I reduce this down to one meter, now you can see uh, I've made the, the fog significantly thicker so at one meter it's completely opaque let's set our color back to white again now you can see i've got this nice volume of fog and um so let's take a look at how we control what's actually inside this volume right now we have our mask mode set to texture which means that we can create or we can select a 3d texture mask to control what's happening on the interior of our volume. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see that that sample pack that I downloaded uh, from the HDRP samples 
came with a bunch of volume, uh, a bunch of 3D volume textures. Uh, you can see normal textures have like a little thumbnail here, but if it's a 3D check texture, it has this little checker pattern by it. So if I pick 3D texture checker, now you can see that my fog volume has this three-dimensional checkerboard pattern applied to it, and that's coming from this volumetric texture. Uh, another setting that I want to show you is uh, this blend distance here. I've got my blend distance set to 0.1, and that means that I'm falling off 10% uh, of the size of the volume from the edge to the interior. You can see I've got like two little UI widgets here. I've got the outside of my volume box and the inside. Uh, and if I set my blend distance, it controls how far in that inside box will appear. So if I set my blend distance to zero, for example, now my volume goes all the way to the edge of the box, but then I can control, I can use this volume to control how far in that blending is going to appear. So if I set it to 0.1, you can see there's 10% of the distance from the outside to the inside is the fall off of the blending. So I can control how sharp or fuzzy the edges of the volume are with this blend distance. All right, and then this distance fade start and distance aid fade end are um, controlling where the fog will fade out. So if I set my distance fade start to two and fade end to four, for example, now if I get four meters away, that fog is just co gonna completely disappear. So I can use these values to, to control the visibility of the fog and how far away I have to be uh, before the fog is no longer visible. You can see by default, these were set to something like 10,000, uh, which means it's pretty much gonna be visible the entire time. Okay, with my mask mode set to texture, uh, my control over the interior behavior of the volume is kind of limited because I can only set a texture. Uh, let's see if we can pick a, a different one here. I could pick uh, simplex noise uh, to control or to, to put some noise in there. I could also scroll my texture. So if I set this to one, now you can see that my volume is kind of scrolling along there. Um, but this is actually fairly limited because I can only choose a texture control how much it tiles and how it scrolls. And what I actually wanna do is create a shader to control the behavior of this volume. In order to do that, what I need to do is set my mask mode from texture to material. And now you can see it exposes a material slot, which is gonna allow me to create a brand new shader, assign it to a material, uh, and then apply that to our volume. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. So let's go ahead and come on over here to our project panel. We'll come in here to our shaders folder and I'm gonna right click and pick create shader graph, HDRP, fog volume shader graph. And I'm just gonna call this my fog volume. And we'll double click this and get started building our shader. Okay, right away you can see that uh, there's a fairly limited set of options here in my master stack. I don't have any vertex inputs and for fragment all I have is base color and alpha. If I open up my graph inspector here you can see that my material is set to fog volume. All right, so let's go ahead and create a very basic shader. The first thing that I'm going to do is bring in my UV coordinate node. Now this node acts a little bit differently when I'm creating a volumetric shader uh, than when I'm creating a surface shader. Normally with my UVs, if I split out my UV coordinates, uh, you can see that, let's see, if we add a preview node here, for the U coordinate, I get horizontal coordinates, but for the, and for the V coordinate, I get vertical coordinates, and normally, a U and a V is all I'm gonna get, but with a volumetric shader, I actually have a third component here, uh, the B, or we call this the W, U, V, and W. I actually get data in here when I create a volumetric shader. Now you won't see this in the preview, 
But if I wire my UV coordinates directly into color and hit save, uh, now let's go ahead and apply this uh, My Fog Volume material uh, to my volumetric shader. So I'm going to pick my local volume fog or my local volumetric fog volume here, grab my material and drag it into the fog material slot. Now again, you can see that uh, this is really, really dim. Uh, there is something going on there, but you can't really see it. So let's go back to uh, my fog volume here. The other big difference here is this alpha is actually the value that we had before uh, when we set our mask mode to texture and we had a fog distance of one. Uh, so when we have our mask mode set to material, that fog distance value goes away, but we can actually control it with our alpha value here. So if I turn this alpha value up to something a little bit higher, now you can see that our fog is significantly more visible. Let's just set it to like 20 for now and we'll set our blend distance to zero. And now you can see I've got this uh, nice kind of opaque volumetric object going on. The real thing that I wanted to show you though is that we actually have these, uh, coming back to what I was saying about the UV coordinates, we actually do have three uh, dimensions worth of data. We have a U coordinate that's going across this way. We have a V coordinate that's vertical, but we also have a W component now that's giving us the depth. So we get three dimensions of UVW coordinates uh, when we're creating these volumetric fog shaders. So our UV coordinate node is actually bringing in U, V, and W uh, data and that's really valuable. So we can use uh, these coordinates to define uh, the three-dimensional coordinates inside our volume, not just the 2D uh, UV coordinates that we're used to defining on the surface of our model. Okay, well now that we've got these basics out of the way, why don't we go ahead and create this effect here? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is take my volume here and uh, just set a couple of the settings on it. We're gonna set it to a uh, blend distance of 0 0.1, and we're gonna set its size to four and four and two, whoops. And now we're gonna go ahead and create our shader uh, so that this fog volume looks like that fog, fog volume. So uh, the first thing that we need to do is sample a texture. So I'm gonna add a sample texture 2D node and we're just going to add a noise texture in here. And the noise texture that we're gonna use comes with the, the volume package. So I'm gonna uncheck this box here so that those aren't masked out and I'm just gonna pick uh, noise. So you can see I've got this uh, nice uh, two dimensional noise and now we need to create some UV coordinates for that. Um, so what if I just take my UVs here and wire them directly in, and then we pass this into color. What's that gonna look like uh, for our volume texture? All right, so if we look at this thing from the side, you can see that that noise is projected on the U and the V, uh, and then the W coordinate is just stretched. So it kind of looks like a nice rainbow there. So actually what we want to do is project this texture from the top. And so what I'm going to do now is add a swizzle node here so that we can just get the X and the Z. And now I'll wire that in. You can see that our preview ends up looking smeared here and that's because the it's projecting it from the top. But if we take a look at our volume now, you can see that uh, that noise pattern is projected from up above. Okay, what we're actually gonna do, instead of using UV coordinates, is we're gonna use position. So let's add a position node, and we're gonna use the position in object space. And again, we're, we'll take our position coordinates and swizzle them so we're just getting the, the X and the Z. And now we need to control this a little bit. So we're gonna add a multiply here. And we'll 
add a float value that we can use to control the tiling of our coordinates. So for now, we're just going to set our tiling value to 0 0.5. And now we need to scroll that value. So I'm going to add another float value that we can use to control the speed of our scrolling. And I'm going to set this to 0 0.1. And we're going to multiply this by another value that we can use to control the direction. So I'm going to add a float 2 for this one. And for now, we're just going to set the direction to uh, a value of 1 for x and 0 for y. Um, but we can use this later. We could expose this parameter and use it to control the direction of our speed. And now we're going to multiply this by time. So here's our time node, and this is what's going to create the scrolling. So we're going to multiply time by our speed and our direction. So this value controls our tiling, this value controls our speed, this value controls our direction, and we just need to add these together, and then we can pass this into our coordinate. All right, so there's our texture sample. And now the last thing that we need to do, what we're gonna be doing is using this texture sample uh, to not, not define the color of our volume, but actually to define the alpha here, we're going to use that texture sample to define uh, the opacity of the fog and control like we want the fog to show up on the bottom of the volume, but not the top, that sort of thing. So the next thing that we're going to do is grab the red channel of our texture and we're going to connect that to an inverse lerp node and we're going to put it into the B socket of this inverse lerp. We're going to leave the A socket at zero and the B socket's gonna be the value of our texture. And then this T value, uh, we're gonna use actually the height of our volume. So let's come back over here to our UV coordinates. And we just want the, the V coordinate of this. So I'm gonna use a split node and we're gonna split out the G uh, because that's the V coordinate of our UVs. And then we're gonna multiply this by a value that we can use to tweak it a little bit. So this is gonna be the value that we can use to control the like the flatness of our volume. And I'm just gonna leave it at the default two for now and we'll see what that looks like. So this V coordinate is what's gonna control the T value of our inverse lerp there. And it'll control uh, kind of where that uh, value is being applied on the height of our volume. And now we're going to take the result of our inverse slurp and we're going to saturate it, which will clamp it between a value of zero and one. And then finally, we're going to invert it uh, by adding a one minus. And now we can wire that into the alpha value. So I'm going to wire that into the alpha output value. We're just going to grab all our nodes and scoot them over here a little bit to give us a little bit more space and we'll hit save and let's take a look at what we're going to get what we're getting as a result all right i'm seeing nothing which means <laughs> i think i need to control the opacity just a little bit more so let's go ahead and add a multiply right here and we're going to multiply this by 10 just to make it really obvious and now you can see I've got a little bit of fog showing up, but right now our default color is gray. And so we can't see this very well. So I'm gonna change our default color to white just to make this a little bit more obvious. And there we go. So uh, just like we have over there in the, the built-in example, so far we have created this uh, scrolling fog uh, that's just kind of merrily scrolling on its way uh, and it looks like this nice kind of ground height fog example all right this is pretty good but there's one thing that's kind of weird about it and that is that it's kind of uh scrolling uniformly uh all in the same direction like every bit of it is scrolling at the same speed and so what we can do is we can break this up just a little bit uh, and so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so what we're gonna do to uh, break up our scrolling a little bit is add another texture sample that's gonna be kind of our detail noise. But before I do that, I'm just gonna clean up my graph a little bit um, so that my nodes are a little bit more compact. And that's gonna give us more room to add the next bit of detail. 
All right, nice, there we go. So we're gonna be using this same texture. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this sampler texture 2D node. And we're gonna be doing something pretty similar as we're doing down here. So I think I can also copy a bunch of these nodes. This node here controls my tiling. And then I'm gonna add some time and a direction. So I'm just gonna clone these. And we'll wire these uh, coordinates that I've calculated into my texture sample there. For wind direction, instead of this node here, I'm gonna go ahead and wire in the same wind direction that I had down here. Um, but I'm gonna add a negate node so that my wind direction is going the opposite way. And we'll wire this in so that I can have a negative wind direction so that, that for the detail, it's actually moving uh, the opposite direction. And then for the speed of that, instead of 0 0.1, I'm gonna set that to 0 0.25. And actually, you know what? I think I might set my other wind direction to 0 0.25 as well. And for the tiling of my detail texture, I'm gonna set it to 0 0.85. All right, so you can see for my detail texture, I have a detail tiling value, a wind speed value. I'm using the same wind direction, but I'm negating it. And then I multiply by time and then add that to uh, my position XZ. And there is my detail, uh, detail sample. And now I'm gonna, gonna combine this detail sample uh, with my, my regular sample down here using another inverse lerp. So I'm gonna wire out of the red channel here and add an, another inverse lerp value. I'm gonna connect this one to B and then here in this one minus, I'm gonna connect this to my T value. So I'm using uh, this value uh, as my, um, my blending value between A and B. And now the result of this inverse lerp is what I'm going to pass into my multiply down here, which is gonna be uh, define the, the alpha or the opacity of my volume. All right, let's go ahead and hit save and we'll switch back to our scene. Now you can see that because I'm doing both of these texture samples, one of them is scrolling to the left and the other one is scrolling to the right. It's kind of creating this really interesting interference pattern. So both of these textures are sampled uh, at different sizes and they're scrolling at different speeds. And so it creates some really interesting looking complexity here. Okay, the only thing left to do now is to create uh, our color. And so let's go ahead and do that. We'll switch back to our shader here. And for the, let's see, I'm gonna move these nodes over just a little bit to give myself some more room to create the color values. We're gonna do that up here. And so for the colors, what I need to do is add two color nodes. And we're just gonna go ahead and sample the colors that are being used in that other material. So I'll pick my eyedropper here and sample my top color and then I'll copy my color node use my eyedropper again and sample my bottom color okay let's lerp between these two I'm gonna lerp between the bottom color and the top color and now I need to set up a mask uh, that controls this this lerp this in, uh, input for my lerp so to do that I'm gonna create a smooth step node and we'll wire in our smooth step and for that smooth step i'm going to take the output of this inverse lerp here and first i'm going to subtract out a, a value that will control uh, where the gradient ends uh, for now i'm just going to give this a value of 0 0.1 and this will kind of be the bottom of the bottom part of the gradient and then i'm going to clamp that uh, and prevent it from going too small so I'm gonna add a maximum here and we're just gonna set it to a maximum of 0 0.01 and this will prevent it from going below that value. Uh, actually 0 0.01, there we go. Now I'm gonna subtract one from the value of this. So I got my subtract one and this is gonna be my edge one. And then here, this is gonna be my edge two all right and then for my input here on my smooth step i'm going to use 
uh, the V coordinate of my UVs, which is kind of controlling the height uh, of my volume. So I'm blending between um, this subtracted one value and this original value based on the height of the volume. So that's giving me kind of a gradient, which is then gonna be blend between this lighter color and this darker color. Okay, and that's gonna be my color so that I can just wire that into base color on my master stack. So I've got these nodes here, which control the color um, based on the height of the blend. And then I've got these nodes here, which control like the base smoke. And then these nodes here, which control the detail smoke. So it looks kind of complicated, but it's pretty straightforward. There's just three main sections, detail smoke, base smoke, and color. And then I'll hit save and switch back to my scene. And very cool, I've got my nice uh, volumetric fog effect. So the really nice thing about this is you can control, uh, I mean, you can create all kinds of things to, to create neat shaders. You can create swirling patterns, you can create volumetric shapes, uh, you can create, you know, scrolling smoke. Uh, you've got basically infinite control uh, using shader graph. All right, now we're gonna switch over to Unreal and create something very similar in that engine. All right, here we are in our sample shader scene in Unreal. And you can see that I have this cube here selected. Here's my cube. And if we take a look at the material that's set on the cube, it's set to volume fog. So let's take a look at our volume fog material. If we zoom in here on our, uh, our main node, you can see that I have the material domain set to volume and I have the blend mode set to additive. I have the albedo color set to one, which is white. And then down here I have the extinction value set. Extinction is the same thing as uh, opacity pretty much, but it's, it's for uh, fog volumes. Okay, so when we look at our scene here, uh, nothing is showing up on our volume. And the reason for that is that our scene, in order for volume uh, materials to show up, we need to have an exponential height fog item in our scene. So I'm just gonna grab this and drag and drop it in. And then uh, on our exponential height fog component over here, I'm gonna scroll down and set my volumetric fog to true. And then I'm gonna set my scattering distribution to something like 0 0.6. So now you can see that this cube that I added to my scene is actually showing up with volumetric fog now. So here's my cube. And you can see as I scroll around it, I've got the, or as I rotate around it rather, I've got this nice volumetric fog applied. Now, in terms of how the shader works uh, in Unreal, there are some pretty big differences. First of all, uh, Unreal doesn't have that nice fall off that I can define on the fog volume for where it's blending out. So I need to be able to create this fall off myself in the shader. You can see that I've got the volume set up right now so that it's creating kind of this like spherical shape inside. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's switch over to our shader. And we'll come over here. So what I've got here is the local position node. And I'm taking the local position and subtracting the local bounds minimum from it, and then dividing by the local bounds size. And what this is doing is the same thing in Unity we were getting from the UV coordinate node, I'm getting by doing these uh, operations here. So if I take my local position, subtract the local bounds minimum, and then divide by the local bounds size, that's gonna give me the coordinates for the inside of the sphere or sorry, for the inside of the volume. So if I take this value here and wire it into our color, and let's just, let's just disconnect our dis extinction for now, and we'll save this. And now when we switch up back to our scene, you can see that I'm getting these colors that indicate uh, the X, Y, and Z coordinates for the inside of my volume. 
And this is basically the foundation for all of the rest of the effects that you're going you're gonna to want to do uh, in order to to do uh, to define what's happening in our volume. Uh, we we need uh, U V W coordinates, and so that's what we get uh, with this little operation here with our local position and our object local bounds. So now that we have our coordinates, uh, we can do all kinds of things with them. So the first thing that we're doing here is we're taking our distance node and finding the distance between our current position inside the volume and 0 0.5. Well, what's 0 0.5? 0 0.5 is the center of the volume. Uh, so if we take the distance um, between our current position and the center of the volume, uh, we're going to get a value that shows us, uh, well, that's dark when we're right at the center, that's black. And then the further away from the center that we get, the brighter that's going to be. So um, now we're going to multiply by two and then subtract one, and that's going to make it bright right in the center and then fall off toward the outside. So if we then take this value and multiply it by uh, zero or by point by five, <laughs> that's going to give us kind of a, a dark or a higher opacity value. And that is how we're creating this um, kind of spherical fall off shape, right? So we're measuring the center or the distance uh, from our current point to the center. And then we're inverting that value and we get this nice shape. Now, uh, there's a little bit, of, there, there are a few things we can do to control this. This value here, uh, the lower it is, the more square our shape is gonna be and the closer to two it is, uh, the more round our shape is gonna be. So if I set this some, to something like maybe 1.4, now you can see that our shape is kind of, it's no longer as round and it's kind of being pushed out toward the edges of the cube. So when I set this value somewhere between one and two, it controls um, that fall off, whether it's spherical at a value of two or cubed at a value of one, I can kind of control uh, the overall shape of my volume. And with this value here, uh, once I've found that shape and then I multiply it by something, I can control uh, the opacity or the thickness of the, the fog inside that volume. All right, well, with those two pieces of information covered, uh, let's take a look at this shader up here that we've created. This is the same one that we made in Unity. And so I'm not gonna go through it like one node at a time, um, but we're basically doing exactly the same thing. So we take our local position and we're just taking the X and the Y coordinates, which are uh, top down. Uh, and then we're dividing them by a hundred because the, the units in Unreal uh, are in centimeters. So if we want to use units and meters, we need to uh, divide by a hundred. So here's our unit. And we're using this as, as our UV coordinates, basically. Uh, then we multiply by a value that we could expose here that controls our tiling. And then we're, we're setting up ourselves for our scrolling texture here. So we take our wind direction and our wind speed and we multiply them together and then we multiply them by time and then we add that scrolling information to uh, our coordinates here and that's what we use to sample our texture. Now this texture here is just a, a simple noise distortion uh, and there are a lot of different options that you can choose from. Uh, Unreal ships with a bunch. Uh, you can find some if you just type noise and there are a bunch of different noises here. Some of these are from Unreal and some of them are from various sample packages that I've installed. Um, but you should be able to find a suitable noise in there. Um, and then we take uh, the, the output of our noise. We're just using the red channel in this case. And we plug that into our inverse lerp node uh, into the B channel, uh, into the B input port. And the A is left at a, z a value of zero. Uh, and then to control, to control the blending between zero and our noise. So this is kind of like our height value here. So the height of our volume, uh, if we come back here down to our coordinates that we generated, uh, you can see that we're masking off the B, uh, which is also the Z component 
here, and that's the height of our volume. And then we mul multiply that by 1.5 here. This is a value that we can use to control um, the flatness of the effect. We've wired that into our inverse lerp. So we're blending between zero and our texture. This zero value here represents the empty space in the top portion of our value. And then this B value coming in from our texture represents the space at the bottom where the, uh, where the noise is actually happening. And then we saturate and we inverse uh, and we invert that. We uh, give it a one minus. And then I'm gonna, just, just for now, I'm gonna connect this one minus down here to our opacity. You can see we're multiplying by five and I'll save it and we'll take a look at what we get as a result of that. All right, so you can see here, we've got our UV coordinates piped in as our color, um, but that first series of nodes that we wired together allowed us to get uh, just some simple scrolling noise. And then in order to improve on that scrolling noise, uh, we're doing basically the same thing that we did here, um, but we're doing it again for our detail. Uh, so we take our wind direction and we multiply it by negative one here to invert it, to make it go the opposite direction. Then we have a value here that controls the speed of our, uh, of our detail noise, which is scrolling in the opposite direction. So we multiply our negated wind direction by our detail speed, and then we multiply that by time. And then we take our detail tiling value and we multiply that um, by our coordinates here. So our coordinates are coming from our local position. And then we add our scrolling data here, our time and speed and direction together with our coordinates that have been multiplied by three. And then we use that to sample the same noise texture again but this time, because we're tiling it uh, multiplied by three, you can see that we get a little bit tighter pattern here. Uh, and we're also scrolling it uh, at a different speed and in the opposite direction. So the output of that texture then, uh, we take the red channel and we plug that into our inverse lerp. And then we use uh, our original value here. So here's our inverse lerp from our original value, saturated, and inverted with a one minus. We use that value to blend between zero and our noise value. And so that gives us uh, this final inverse lerp here, uh, which we can then take the result of that and plug it into our opacity multiply. And now we get a much more detailed pattern. So we've got uh, our one uh, texture that's scrolling in one direction, but then we have our detail texture uh, that's scrolling in the opposite direction uh, and kind of adding some additional detail and noise uh, to our overall pattern. All right, and then for the color of our smoke, uh, let's switch back here. We're gonna take the output of all of that and use it to create a gradient. Uh, so here is our uh, bottom color and here is our top color and we're blending between our bottom color and our top color based on a gradient that we create um, using the the height coordinate of our volume and then we're uh, we're blending that height coordinate together with uh, this this inverse lerp so we take that inverse lerp result and we're gonna subtract out this volume here that just controls uh, like where the gradient ends. And then we're gonna take uh, the result of that and clamp it uh, with a value of 0 0.01 using maximum so that it doesn't get any smaller than that. Then we're gonna subtract one and we're gonna pa pass that into a smooth step as the minimum. And then the maximum is gonna be our original value and then we're gonna use this value here uh, as the blending of our smooth step. And that is coming from the coordinates that we generated uh, from uh, the height value here of our volume. Uh, so we're passing in our height of the volume 
uh, multiply by 1.5 to flatten it out just a little bit. And we're using that as our smooth step. And then we're using the result of this smooth step to blend between our bottom color and our top color. So we're using that lerp to blend the colors and then the output of this lerp can then become the final color of our smoke. All right, so there is our nice volumetric smoke material. Pretty cool. Let's uh, take a look at our shader one last time. I'll just kind of organize things a little bit. Uh, you can see here that I have this, uh, the first scrolling texture material and then the second scrolling texture um, uh, part of it here and then these nodes up here that control the color uh, based on our height and then we pass the color into albedo and we pass uh, the opacity into extinction and we have this value down here that we can use to uh, control the opacity um, but yeah that is what gives us our animated uh, volumetric ground smoke effect and we can do all kinds of things with this. We can uh, move the volume around to place it where we want it to be. Uh, we can control the scale of our cube. Oh, and by the way, this is just a normal cube object. So um, if I come up here to my place actors and just grab a cube and drag it into my scene, this is what I can apply that material to. So it's just a, a regular primitive object. Uh, and I can control the scale of my object. So if I need to make my fog bigger, make it taller, uh, I can do that. And yeah, so I can add this cool fog to my, to my scene. All right, so I hope you enjoyed our tutorial today uh, about uh, creating local volumetric fog. And I hope you find something really interesting that you can do with this. I'd love to see uh, how you guys use this effect. So if you uh, if you want to uh, let me know if this is useful down in the comments, I, I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next week.